Christopher Nolan's carbon footprint alone should make you stop watching his movie. Like, I get it. People don't care if his movies are full of dead wives who have no character development or that his movies have a long track record of being mostly white men and completely leaving out the histories, the real lived experiences of other people who should have been talked about, including this movie. This movie is so racist. It blatantly ignores all the people that were living in New Mexico when this bomb went off. Like, he just doesn't care. He doesn't care. This dude is living the white male privilege life if I've ever seen it. This man is such, like, I, I used to like his stuff because everyone said he's brilliant. He's brilliant. And you know, I don't actually think he's brilliant anymore. I think he's entitled. Sure, he might be smart, creative, Blah, blah, blah. He doesn't let people sit down on his set just like Bradley Cooper who worships him. He doesn't let people have cell phones on set because this entitled King Baby has his wife on set doing all that for him. She's, she doesn't have an email address because she takes care of it. But he, he thinks no one else should have a phone on set because he doesn't. As if people are not parents and caregivers and also like trying to stay in touch with their families because they're never home because working in the movie industry you get so exploited as a crew member I say this as a former crew member that you the only way you can connect with their your loved ones is on your phone in the dull moments when you're waiting to go work on 12 to 16 hour days on set so but let's talk about how reckless this prick is when it comes to his carbon footprint. He is the worst, y'all. I can't, I can't believe we have not talked about this more. Also, I lived in New Mexico for most of my 20s. I, New Mexico has a, has a special place in my heart. And after I just read how reckless and, ugh, I can't believe this man still gets to do this. Before he made a literal bomb, to blow up in real time in New Mexico, which is gonna have an environmental impact, okay? Before he decided to do, do that absurdity, he's been doing this for a while on Instellar or whatever. Look at this. He just doesn't want to use CGI. He's too good for it. Nobody has the audacity that this man does. And it's also because of the way people talk about him. When it comes to visual effects, there's no competing with Miss Christopher Nolan. Okay, well, partly is because no one has the entitlement and short-sightedness and selfishness and complete lack of regard for the environment as Christopher Nolan as a director. Look at this! I wanted the cornfields to be visually real. So instead of doing something simple like CGI, he planted 500 acres of corn. It cost $100,000 to do that. But you know what? That doesn't matter. You have a $165 million budget. What's $100,000? You know, it's really funny though, and yet in the same breath, these filmmakers and the producers and all the people who make the money decisions are not paying the crew what they deserve. The PAs who work on movies like this get paid, rarely get paid overtime. They are paid like pennies compared to what they should be making for an hourly wage. We had to fight so hard to get paid a double day if we went over 16 hours of shooting. And that's like what, an extra $150, $200? But he's like, you know what? We need real corn. I don't want CGI corn, real corn, 100,000. You know what I mean? That is what grosses me out about this industry. The dumb like artistic decisions of, of men like Christopher Nolan that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars sometimes. They don't even bat an eye. But when the crew who are making that film happen asks to be paid fairly and asks to have uh, compensation for having to drive an hour after, you know, home, an hour there, uh, and then work a 16 hour, like it is so unsafe to work in this industry. And they don't want to pay, they don't want to pay. But they will always make money for something like this, a stupid cornfield. He's a visual master. Shut up. He 
He's not. He's just a selfish, entitled prick who doesn't care about consequences and definitely doesn't care about global warming or climate change or, you know, the fact the world is literally burning. He's like, I know, I want to make a movie about the white dude who made the bomb instead of all the people that were affected by that bomb, whether it's the actual bomb itself or the test bombs in New Mexico and how it destroyed those communities. No, I want a boring three hour film about the, the, the moral dilemma of a white man thinking about doing it. Shut up. God, I, oh, sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm livid. Insistence on using practical effects instead of computer generated ones is, it makes his carbon footprint bonkers. Look at this. He blew up a plane for tenants. Could have done that CGI. No, I want a plane. I want to blow up a Real plane, it looks more real. It's just like Tarantino. This is the same thing with Tarantino does, except instead of like, you know, Tarantino, he's like, no, I don't, I want to see real choking. So he literally choked one of his actresses so that we could see her eyes bulging. This is, I have a video on this, y'all. He literally said he wanted to look real. So he literally choked a woman because we need to see, we don't want to see her act, though that's her job. And though someone like me doesn't know that that choking, she's faking choking because I've never choked somebody. The same way I wouldn't know if that was a fake blow up plane or a real one. Who cares? The way they destroy the environment and women and people of color, black, indigenous, and other people of color, the way they, they, they literally throw anyone under the bus for these king babies artistic vision. And it's sick. And that's why the, the film industry is a microcosm of capitalism, white supremacy, patriarchy, uh, all the things bad. That culture, the film industry is an exaggerated version of what happens everywhere and why the earth is dying and why God. In fact, Christopher Nolan, let me just let, let me show you something. This this came out before the Oppenheimer thing. I'd love to know what the carbon footprint of Oppenheimer was. Look at this, just for inception alone. Just Leonardo DiCaprio. This doesn't include the crew or him or like any of the other actors. Leonardo DiCaprio's carbon footprint alone for that one film was 4.8 metric tons. I don't know what that number means, but I do know when they explain that it's 300% over the average person's, that was just for one movie. Why was it so big? Because Christopher Nolan likes authenticity. So we wanted it to be the flights back and forth between Tokyo, Tangier, Paris, Alberta, Los Angeles, between flying these crew. I remember when I was watching this movie and this is when I bit, when I was in the film industry, when I watched this, I was like, oh my God, this thing must've cost a fortune. And as somebody who worked in set dressing and props, I can't tell you how much money is wasted. We'll literally dress a whole set and then they're like, okay. And they make us throw it in the trash. I would desperately try to find people to give this furniture. And when I was in craft services uh, to give people that, this food away to. It is the most wasteful industry I have ever been a part of. And Christopher Nolan makes that so much worse. Look at this, The Dark Knight, another one. Just Christian Bale, not the rest of them, just Christian Bale. 4.7 metric tons. He was flying all over. Estonia, Italy, India, Denmark, Norway, England. Why? Only a few people will talk about this massive carbon footprint of Hollywood. In this day and age, nobody should be blowing up New Mexico for the authenticity sake. No one used uh, computer graphics in the dark night, but he wanted people to understand the Trinity test. So he literally showed up in New Mexico, a white man with a mostly white crew telling a white man's story because he wanted the spectacular imagery to try to look into the Oppenheimer's mind. We can do that with CGI. I'm gonna, if, let me know if you want a part two because this needs a whole video of what he did to New Mexico. I can't cover it in this video. This makes my blood boil. He bragged in an interview about using less <laughs> CGI than romantic comedies. Compare that to um, Avengers Endgame that used 2,000 of, like, effects. Christopher Nolan only used 300, even though his movies require... This, is, this man spends so much money, harms his crew, and puts the environment at risk to get the shot, the authentic shot. His stuntman was like, this dude's nuts. Look, it's grueling. Nolan likes to do everything realistic. By the way, while he's doing all this, 
Some of his actors have like ratted him out for like it not being safe. Every time they try to talk about it, they always backtrack because nobody wants to piss off Nolan. Every actor wants to work with Nolan. King baby director. Look at this guy. So secretive. Flies across the world to hand his scripts to his actor. Like Michael Caine talked about here. And then just stands there and makes him read it right in front of him. Like this dude. That was like a sociopath. Comment for part two.